Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar. Uh, it's right at 12. So I wanna give everyone a chance to get logged in. I know it's right at lunch. Um, let's give everyone another one minute before we get started. Thank you. Okay, it is 12.01. Let's go ahead, uh, get started. Again, thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Ku Lee. I am the Targeted Outreach Director for the Department of Financial Protection and Innovation. Uh, today's financial education webinar is going to be about end-of-year financial planning. Um, a lot of really great information. Let's go ahead, get started. <clears throat> so just a disclaimer about this webinar. Um, the views and opinions expressed in this presentation are those of the presenter. They do not necessarily reflect the views of the position of the DFPI. Uh, this presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. Uh, this is not financial advice, and it does not replace any independent or professional judgment. Um, we really encourage you to do your own research as you learn more about the different topics that we'll cover in this presentation. <clears throat> Uh, the DFPI does not assume responsibility for the completeness of the information in this presentation. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and it will be published to our YouTube channel. Um, so your cameras and microphones have been turned off. But if you do have a question, please submit it into the Zoom's Q&A feature. Um, there is a dedicated Q&A session at the very end. So anytime during the presentation, if you have a question, just submit it to the Q&A. We will, I will answer it at the very end. Okay. <clears throat> we always go over this, but I, I, you know, I think it's really important information. Uh, what is the Department of Financial Protection Innovation? What is the FPI? Who are we and what do we do? Uh, well, we are California's uh, licensing and regulatory agency of state financial institutions, products, and professionals. Um, so we license and we oversee a lot of state financial institutions and products and professionals. We conduct exams to ensure compliance. We review consumer complaints that are submitted to us, and we pursue legal actions against those who are operating illegally or are using unlawful, deceptive, or abusive practices. Another thing a lot of people don't know what we <clears throat> about us is that we provide consumer awareness presentations throughout uh, California to help protect consumers from falling prey to frauds and scams. So, you know, financial education, uh, presentations in person and virtually, um, exactly like what you're seeing right now. Uh, if you want to learn more, please go to our website. Here's a link for consumers, uh, dfpi.ca.gov slash consumers. All right, let's get it. Let's jump right into it. Just want to give you a set expectations and give you a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, you know, we're going to start off by talking about charitable giving and the benefits of the the you know tax planning, um, a little bit of the strategies behind it. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, reviewing your investment portfolio and and you know reviewing your retirement planning, your goals. <clears throat> we're going to be talking about a little, just a little bit about debt management and budgeting for next year, and then uh, some estate planning and updating your estate uh, planning, um, and also something that a lot of people uh, overlook, which is reviewing your personal net worth, right, uh, for the year. And then, of course, the live Q&A session at the very end. All right. So 2023 tax strategies. Um, a lot of, the, you know, really this webinar is just kind of a reminder. We're not going to dive too deep into a lot of these categories um, and a lot of this information. And that's mostly because we want you to go out and do a lot more research. Everyone's financial situation is different. And so, you know, if I just went into all the nitty gritty, it might not actually give you the information you need um, in a timely manner. <clears throat> so first things first, one thing that I like to tell everyone is, especially this time of year, 
review your year to date earnings, right? So review all the money you've earned this year, um, whether it's from your job, your you know, uh, 1099 contracting, whatever it is, um, because you don't want to get surprised by a tax bill next year. Um, I've linked a uh, the 2023 tax brackets and rates. Um, they've changed, and I believe they're going to be changing again next year as well. So make sure, you, again, you're not going to get a big tax surprise by just calculating everything you've earned this year and seeing if you're going to be moving up or even down a certain tax bracket. And again, that way you won't be surprised by the different tax, uh, <clears throat> the different taxes that you might be hit with. Um, also, you by knowing what tax bracket you're going to be in, and maybe even projecting how much taxes you may owe um, or even receive uh, as a refund, you might be able to do things like increase your retirement contributions so that it will bring you down a certain tax bracket, right? So, of course, that brings us to the next bullet point, which is talking about increasing your retirement contributions uh, if you need to, if you need to, right? Um, so first of all, for 2023, they increased the maximum IRA tax contribution. It used to be $6,000 a year. Uh, that was 2022. For 2023, the maximum is $6,500 a year. If you're 50 or older, it's $7,500 a year. What does this mean? Well, uh, you may not be up to date about all these different changes. And um, what I like to tell everyone is, hey, maximize your retirement contributions if you can, right? And and here's kind of a side story, right? I was having this conversation with uh, with a consumer that came to one of our events, and he was basically asking me, hey, why should I, why should I have an IRA? Why don't I just get put money in a savings account? <clears throat> well, um, you can if you want to just put money in a savings account. If you don't want to do an IRA, but the IRA, which actually stands for Individual Retirement Account, it's a way to to help to have your money grow tax free, right? Depending if it's traditional or Roth. And uh, what I mean by that is, if you put money in a savings account, um, you're actually taxed on the interest that that savings account, uh, the interest in that sa that saving account um, incurs. So if you put money into an IRA, depending, especially if it's an, a Roth IRA, um, when you put money into like a Roth IRA, that money grows and as well, uh, you know, when you withdraw it at age 59 and a half, you could, all that capital gains from the money growing, however many years, that's tax free. That's, that's a Roth IRA. Um, with a traditional uh, IRA, uh, you get, you could take the tax advantages up front and you don't get that with a savings account. So again, just kind of a side conversation here. What I really tell everyone is, hey, look at your IRA contributions, make sure you've maximized it if you can, right? Um, because you don't get that back, <laughs> okay? Um, so the other thing to consider when we talk about tax strategies is uh, if you're not taking the standard deduction, if you're taking the, uh, if you're basically doing the, um, what do you call it, uh, where you're accounting for all your expenses and everything, um, consider charitable giving or donations, right? Again, trying to take as, as many uh, tax deductions as possible, and it's... <laughs> You basically got 11 days until the end of the year to do any more charitable giving or donations. Again, it's all about trying to bring yourself down to a certain tax bracket. Um, what I also suggest is if you have a tax professional that you go to, definitely want to consult them, um, especially if before they go on vacation and you've checked your year to earn year to date earnings. Maybe you got a raise, right? Maybe you got a big bonus and that's going to kick you up a certain tax bracket. You might want to review that, especially with your tax professional and say, hey, how can I bring myself down so that I don't get hit with a huge tax bill next year? So <clears throat> again, tax strategies. Um, let's talk about next year's tax strategies. So uh, you can increase or decrease your W-2 holdings, right? Uh, again, maybe you um, had a new addition to your family, right? And so you need to, again, increase or decrease your W-2 holdings. Maybe you got a big raise, a, a promotion. Um, again, all that factors into your W-2 holdings, which will, like, when the beginning of the next year happens, um, will take effect, right? And so your paychecks from then on can be with automatically withdrawing money for taxes, right? So again, consider that. Um, I also plan out any additional charitable giving donations, especially if you're doing it at the end of this year, you may need to do it again next year. 
to uh, take advantage of those deductions. Um, we've already talked about maximizing retirement contributions, but did you know for 2024, the maximum IRA contributions go up? So uh, this year it's $6,500 um, for those under 50. Uh, next year it goes up to 7,000, a maximum of 7,000. So take advantage of it, maximize it if you can. Um, I'm not going to dive too deep into the health savings and the flexible savings accounts, um, but uh, before the end of the year, you want to review that. And, uh, you know, contributions to a health savings account uh, for tax deductible contributions and tax free withdrawals uh, for medical expenses. Oh, right. Um, did you know that you could actually qualify, depending on a certain threshold? Again, talk to your tax professional that there are, you can deduct certain medical expenses as soon as it reaches a certain threshold. Again, I'm not a tax professional. This is not tax advice, but I would say if you are, if you had a lot of medical expenses this year, if you're planning on medical expenses next year, right? Um, do all that planning, right? Strategize that way. Again, you could take advantage of those deductions. Um, one thing I always plug is a ScholarShare 529 account. Um, did you know money that grows in a 529 account? So you put in, I don't know, uh, $50,000 into a, a five ScholarShare 529 account and it grows to $200,000, whatever. Uh, all that money, all that capital gains is not taxable, right? You could withdraw it tax-free so long as you use it for educational purposes. So consider that. Um, I know uh, Scholar Share 529 actually just wrapped up a promotion. It was a really good promotion, but they do have them every so often. So just go on the website, check out. I think you can also subscribe to their newsletter so that whenever they have a new uh, special coming out for Scholar Share 529, you can take advantage of it. Um, and finally, just a, another plug here for another agency that we work closely with. They're fantastic. Um, <clears throat> you could search and claim any unclaimed property at the uh, California um, State Controller's Office. So there's a link right there. Um, you may have things that you don't know, right? Property, uh, money, uh, settlements that might be in your name. Uh, for tax purposes, that again, if it's a lot of money, unclaimed property of some sort um, that you'll get taxed on, maybe this year is not the year to claim it, right? You're at a high tax bracket already. Um, or maybe you're at a low tax bracket. And then this this year, you might be a really good time to claim it because you're expecting next year to get a, a bigger bonus or maybe next year you're going to get uh, you know a promotion. So this is the year you claim it. Um, but again, plugging the uh, state controller's office to check and find any unclaimed property you might have. Okay. Investment portfolio review. This is so important. I know a lot of people ignore it. Um, what is an investment portfolio review? Well, basically every year, um, every so often, and some people just, you know, some people don't want to think about it. They just put money away, whether it's in a 401k, an IRA, uh, personal investment accounts. Um, that's great. Happy you're saving money. That's, that's really the point. Uh, but you also should also review, you should also check on its performance, right? Um, check on a check, see if it's gonna, if it's projected to reach your investment financial and retirement goals, right? Um, and maybe you need to make some changes, right? Maybe you're you're investing too conservatively, or maybe you're not uh, investing in the right things, or maybe the things that you're investing in is not performing well, right? That's what an investment portfolio review is for, um, especially at the end of the year. It's kind of a really good time. Um, you could just, uh, you know, because it's the quarter, the fourth quarter, uh, you know, a lot of earnings and that kind of stuff happening. Um, so, just review your investment portfolio's performance. Um, check it against last year's performance and see how you're doing, right? Um, maybe you need to increase or decrease your retirement contributions based on how it's performing. Um, also, you can roll over any retirement accounts, right? Let's just say you change employers uh, this year and um, you had like a 401k at your old employer. Why would you have it there? You can just roll it over to your new employer or you could roll it over into an IRA um, it's a really good time to do it. Just consider it. Uh, another thing you could do is, of course, um, adjusting your portfolio compositions. What does that mean? Um, that means that, hey, if you were holding, I don't know, uh, some cryptocurrencies in your portfolio and it didn't do too well this year, maybe next year you just uh, you know change out your, your investment portfolio composition, right? 
Um, and then another thing I always like to plug is if you want something a little more secure, um, you could always consider uh, a CD, a certificate of deposit, um, or money market accounts. Um, certificate of deposits are insured by FDIC up to $250,000. So it's very secure if you had, maybe you got a big bonus, uh, but you don't know what to do with the money for now, and the markets kind of are scaring you. Um, CD is kind of a great place to put it in, right? Just for a, a, a certain amount of time. Um, okay. Oh, great. Uh, I am getting a lot of some good, good questions. Just a reminder, if you do have any questions, please feel free to submit it into the, the Zoom's Q&A feature. I will be answering questions at the very end. I also got a bunch of questions uh, sent to me before the webinar, so um, we'll be answering those as well. Uh, all right, let's talk about debt management. Um, you know, you want to, this is a really important thing to do. A lot of people don't think about this, but you want to review your debt expenses and spending for 2023, right? Um, maybe you could look back in 2022 and see what's happening. Did you spend more money? Um, are you subscribed to a lot of other services that you weren't subscribed to, right? It might be a good time to cancel some of those subscriptions, right? If you're, you're you know, not going to name names, but if there's a lot of streaming services that you're, uh, you took a promotion on, right? You, you subscribe to during a promotion, it might be a good time to review those, see if you're actually using it and uh, get rid of them. So that way, when the new year comes, you're not hit with that bill and you kind of start fresh. So again, review your debt, expenses, spending. Um, you know, we talked about, yeah, what kind of debt and expenses are you carrying over 2024? Credit cards, um, you know, buy now, pay later. Maybe you're, you're, you're in a buy now, pay later thing. Uh, plan. Um, if you have the money, maybe you get a bonus. Maybe you get money for 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 uh, the holidays, um, for Christmas. Think about using some of that money to pay off that buy now pay later plan, right? Um, so it's, it's so you don't take all that debt and expenses into the new year. Uh, we talked about unsubscribe for any services that you aren't using. Um, this is another big one here, and I always plug this in every one of my presentations uh, as soon as much as I can. Check your credit, right? Um, you get a free credit report every week from the three credit agencies. Um, you can just go to that link right there, annualcreditreport.com. And, you know, what you're really looking for is any kind of uh, account activity. You know, someone uh, doing identity theft, opening up accounts in your name, right? You could also look for accounts that you might have finished, right? And maybe, maybe you paid off some credit cards. Maybe you paid off some loans, some car loans. Uh, maybe you finally paid off your house. Fantastic. Make sure you go to credit port and make sure they got all that payments logged and that the account is closed. Um, so it's a really great time to go do that, especially at the end of the year. Um, and then of course, you know, we're going to talk a little about, uh, you know, if you get a year end bonus or maybe you got a big promotion um, and it's just a big cash uh, award at some point, consider using that money to pay down debt, right? Maybe credit card debt that you incurred during the holidays, um, maybe a car loan, right? Again, uh, instead of carrying all that debt into next year, just get rid of it, start clean. Um, you can also build an emergency fund if you don't have one, right? Uh, I usually recommend anywhere between three months to, to six month uh, emergency fund. If you get a year end bonus, that's a great time, uh, especially if you didn't expect it, just to put that money into a savings account and as your emergency funds, because you never know what's going to happen, right? And of course, you know maybe you're maybe you're having a hard time making your credit card payments or uh, certain bills, and you keep getting hit with you know late fees or whatnot. Um, it's a great time to just automate your payments, right? Uh, especially if again you have something that's always reoccurring. Automate your payments so that you don't get hit with those fees. And of course, when you move on, when the when it turns into January, the new year, you don't have to worry about it, right? Okay. 2024, just going to go quickly over some budgeting things. If you didn't know, uh, we actually have a webinar next month in January. Um, I'll talk about that here in a minute. So really, one of the important things you can do, especially right now, before the new year happens is, hey, just identify some of your 2024 financial goals, right? Maybe you want to be debt free. Maybe you want to clear off some student loans or uh, some uh, credit card, yeah, credit card debt, car loans, whatever it might be. Um, maybe you want to buy a house next year. 
identify your, your 2024 financial goals. It's a great time now because it's going to help you kind of keep that in mind and actually help you plan once January hits, right? Um, a great thing to do is just estimate your income, right? Uh, based on what you're making now, uh, you can categorize, calculate your expenses, right? Roughly. And then uh, one thing I always recommend is using budgeting tools. So things like, you know, the budgeting apps, there's a lot of uh, financial software out there and then just a spreadsheet, Excel, Excel spreadsheet works great too. Um, and then I just want to shamelessly plug our webinar for next month, which is uh, our starting a successful budget for 2024 webinar. It's on January 10th at 12 p.m. Uh, you can register with that link right there. It's our budget, it's, it's our budgeting webinar and we're going to talk about some really great things. It's not just talking about debts, assets, liabilities, that kind of stuff. No, we're going to talk about some psychology things, right? Things that you think of, uh, your social influences that might actually um, influence your budgeting. So great webinar, please sign up for it, especially because it's the new year. It's a great chance to start your budget and start off on the right foot. Okay, estate planning. This is something a lot of people don't think about. In fact, I didn't even think about until I talked to one of my uh, friends who is a financial advisor. Um, it's the end of the year, a lot of things probably change this year for you, right? Uh, you could, you might have uh, new beneficiaries that you want to add into your will, right? Um, maybe certain relationships have changed. Um, maybe you've, you've cha you're have you going to champion a whole nother cause, right? Um, so updating your uh, estate planning. Uh, if you acquired any new assets, so things like a car, maybe a house, um, you know, whatever, maybe jewelry of some sort, right? Uh, whatever uh, investments, if you're, if you've got a whole new investments, um, add that into your estate planning, right? It, it, uh, and estate planning is not just, I got a will and then that's the end of it. Um, you should always keep it updated. Uh, so adding more beneficiaries, right? Maybe you got new grandchildren, or uh, maybe a nephew you didn't know about, add them into your will, right? Um, again, if you have new assets that you acquired this year, make sure you account it for, or account for it in the will. Um, if you have any power attorney documents, right? So when we talk about power attorney, it's, it's more like uh, if you set up power attorneys this year for whatever reason, right? Um, you may consider ending those power attorneys or maybe next year you might want to do power attorneys for whatever reason, right? Um, like if you're military, you're deploying, you wanna make sure you have a power attorney so someone here can take care of your, uh, your finances and other, other situations. Um, while you're overseas. So again, consider power attorneys, especially if you, again, don't, you don't want a power attorney giving someone a power attorney without a deadline on it, uh, an end date and um, <laughs> forgetting all about it, right? Um, estate tax laws changes a lot. I'm not going to talk about it here. Talk about it to a tax professional. Uh, I'm not a tax professional, um, but they change every year. Uh, there are always new updates. And so um, review them, right? Uh, especially because those estate tax laws will affect your will um, and, and what you give away. So just make sure you make those updates. Um, digital assets. This is something I didn't think about as well. Uh, if if something happens to you, you know who's going to have access to your email accounts, your social media, any kind of online checking accounts, that kind of stuff. Um, you may want to add that into your estate planning, or you might just give let's let someone know during the holidays hey uh, i'm gonna i want to give you like my backup i want you to be my backup just in case something happens to me to access my email accounts or to my social media right definitely want to be careful about sharing passwords and personal information but give it to someone you trust um finally update communication and contacts with loved ones and beneficiaries so again if you add in that nephew you didn't know about into your will make sure to let them know say hey uh, I'm adding you in, or maybe you have a grandchild, uh, a brand new grandchild. You know what? Um, let their parents know, hey, I'm leaving them X amount on my estate, or maybe uh, I have this classic car I want to give away to them. Um, let them know, right? Otherwise, if something happens to you, they may never know that this they, they have you know all this uh, generosity that's been left to them. Okay. Uh, let's see, this is the last slide before the, the Q&A. So personal net worth review. A lot of people do this. I do this and I love it. 
um, it can be scary sometimes. Um, what is a personal net, review, uh, net worth review? Well, basically, you're just calculating your net worth. And that's taking your assets and your liabilities, right? Assets minus liabilities, and that's your net worth. Why do this? Why, why get a personal net worth review? Uh, number one, it tells you how you're doing, right? Especially if you're comparing it every year, you can see that um, for most people, hey, you know, I'm making progress, right? Um, you may not make huge progress. And in fact, let's say you buy a house and, it, and it's a huge liability, you might go down. That's okay, right? The idea is as you, you pay off the house, you build equity, you're going to see your personal net worth grow. Um, and, and we, you know, throw in your investments as well, throw in your IRAs, everything you're doing. And it's very encouraging. That's what I, that's why I like to tell everyone. Reviewing your personal net worth every year is going to help you encourage to do things more like save and invest or buy a home, that kind of thing. Plan for the, plan for the next year. Um, so yeah, personal net worth. Um, I think it's very important. It doesn't take too much just to review everything you have assets wise and then reviewing all your liabilities. And uh, again, just figuring out uh, and comparing what your net, work, net worth is um, from this year, last year, um, and then the year before, something like that. Okay, uh, before we go to the q and I wanna try, I'm gonna just put the screen up here um, as a reminder. Sometimes I don't get to this. So if you, if you uh, want, please subscribe to the DFPI's monthly newsletter, um, the Consumer Connection. It has our events. We publish consumer alerts, a lot of really fantastic information. We publish it every month. Um, just go to that link right there, dfpi.ca.gov slash subscribe. Also, this video is being recorded and uh, the slides will be shared to you, everyone who registered. Um, we're, we publish it onto our YouTube channel. Please consider subscribing to us. Um, and also, we need your feedback. Um, submit your feedback about this presentation. Uh, let me know if you want more slides. I talk too fast. You know, we really want to improve these to benefit you, right? You're taking the time to come here and I thank you for that. But I also want to make sure it's meaningful and, and valuable for you. Um, and then of course, plugging my uh, webinar for next month as well. All right, questions. Um, again, as a reminder, if you do have any questions, please submit it into the Zoom's Q and A uh, Q and A feature, and I will answer it. Uh, looks like we have two questions right here. Will you be sharing your presentation? Can we use the links? Answer is yes. Um, all these links work, and I will be sending out the slides to everyone who registered for this webinar. So you'll get a copy of that. You'll also get a link to this webinar recording, which is published on our YouTube channel. So. Thank you, thank you. Uh, next question, are there any resources for people who want to start investing but don't know where to start? It can be very daunting <laughs> to start investing. Um, I will say this, we will be launching an investment education resource center. It's basically a website uh, in the future, <laughs> in the next couple of months, we will be launching it. There's, got a, there's gonna be a lot of really great sources a lot of information, things that people could look at um, and, and to help you get started, you know, things to also consider, uh, you know, protect yourself from investment fraud, scams, red flags that you could see. Um, for now, I would say invest, uh, I think it's investor.gov. Investor investor.gov is a really good website. Um, investment.gov, investor.gov. Let me double check that link. I really want to get this to you. Um, they're fantastic. So investor, yeah, investor.gov. Really great place to start. A lot of great, great information. Um, that's kind of a the place, the place I could recommend you to right now. Um, so or and and also consider talking to an investment advisor, right? A, 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 a licensed, certified financial advisor, um, if you really want to get started into investing. Okay. Um, for budgeting, do you have any apps or online programs that you recommend? So I have some personal recommendations, but I can't do that on this webinar. Um, what I will say is there's a lot of free apps out there um, that you can, you know, phone apps that you can do. Um, there's a lot of free programs out there, right? So online apps where you can sign up and just start some basic budgeting. Um, I think the important thing is just to start budgeting. 
and 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 figure out what works for you, right? Sometimes apps is not the thing, right? Um, every time you want to spin something, you want to pull up your phone and, and check it. Some people love that. Other people don't. So I say uh, figure out what budgeting methodology works for you. That's kind of the, the best thing to do. So again, if it's just spreadsheets, if it's um, uh, uh, envelopes, there's a lot of budgeting strategies out there. Um, I can't recommend any particular apps right now, but I will say there are plenty of free ones. And the last thing about that is when you sign up for those free ones, make sure that you're not submitting a lot of your personal information as well, because some of those free apps, the way they keep them free is they sell your data. So again, um, review those sign up agreements before you, uh, or, you know, before you agree to them and then just start giving them all your financial information. Uh, wow, a lot, of great, a lot of great questions coming in right now. So, um, you know what? One of my staff members texted me a link um, about investing. I do want to just share it. SEC, uh, Securities Exchange Commission. So sec.gov slash page slash investor dash section dash landing. I'm sorry, it's a long link. I will include it in the email uh, follow-up I send everyone. Um, that's a, a should be a really great resource as well. Okay, next question. Uh, what are some disadvantages, advantage of leaving an old 401k from a previous employer where it is at instead of, instead of rolling it over to an IRA? Um, so the only advantage I can think of is that, you know, leaving it an old 401k with a previous employer is that you don't need to do any work. It just sits and it grows, right? The disadvantages, and there are plenty, uh, the first one is you may completely forget about it, right? You completely forget you used to be employed somewhere and you had, you know, 10, 20,000 sitting in a 401k and it's going up or down. You're not even eyes on it, right? Um, that's one disadvantage. The other disadvantage is 401k plans change uh, depending on the employer, right? Um, so your employer might be, they just liquidate. They say no more 401ks for our employees, right? Not saying your money disappears, but what happens is um, the fees that are charged on managing your 401k may increase because of that. And it may actually eat into your 401k, right? Um, you don't have a choice because your old employer, it's with your old employer. So again, I, I try to recommend if you can roll it all, your old, your 401k, wherever it exists into an IRA, or uh, I think you might be able to roll it into your, I'm not like a tax expert here, but definitely rolling into an IRA where you have control of it, right? You remember where it's at, you have control of it. And on top of that, it's growing tax-free for you, right? Um, so yeah, there's a lot of disadvantages of just leaving a 401k from a previous employer. Um, I hope that I answered that question. All right, next one. Um, oh yeah, so my uh, staff member, sec.gov for, uh, for investors. Okay, I know we're a little past 1230. Let me uh, answer some of these questions that were emailed to me. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> Are there any updates in estate tax laws that individuals should be aware of? Okay, uh, so the annual gift tax exclusion, annual gift tax exclusion increased in 2023. Um, I'm not gonna dive into it, but there's a lot of numbers. So just get letting you know, the annual gift tax exclusion increased in 2023. I think they might increase in 2024 as well, but you wanna look into that. Um, especially if you're going to be giving money away for gift purposes, right? So that someone doesn't get taxed on the gift. Uh, look into it. Uh, the lifetime lifetime estate exemption also changed. Uh, I don't have any numbers here. Look into it if you're looking into lifetime uh, estate exemption. Uh, next question. I'm thinking about getting a CD since rates are so good right now. Should I get one? Uh I want to say it's up to your financial situation. Um, the The great thing about CDs is it is financial. It is insured by the FDIC, right? And the rates are actually really good right now. Um, the downside is you're usually locked into a term. So you get like, I think it's three months, six months, 12 months, and longer. You could get long CDs if you want. Usually the rates get better with a longer CD, but um, you're locked into that term. So if you're thinking about buying a house, and you're trying to withdraw money from a certificate of deposit, a CD, uh, you might take penalties on that. Um, well, you probably will take penalties. So 
Um, yeah, CD rates are really great right now. If you just want to park money and have it definitely safe from volatility of the, the stock markets, it's a thing, great thing to consider. Um, I bought a house this year. Is there any kind of tax write-offs I could take advantage of? Great question, especially since it's the end of the year. You want to take care, you want to take advantage of any kind of tax write-offs. Uh, obviously, the you know the deductions we talk about, uh, it's mortgage interest rate deduction. That's one big thing. As a could if this is if this is your first time as a homeowner, make sure you take advantage of the uh, home interest uh, mortgage rate interest deduction, right? Um, you'll look, you'll get a statement from your bank. They'll, they'll tell you how much interest you paid them, and that's deductible. Um, if you have a HELOC, which is a home equity line of credit, um, God forbid you have a HELOC, but if you do, you know, the interest rates on that is also tax deductible. So consider it. Uh, discount points. Hey, if you just bought a house and you purchased discount points um, to get your mortgage interest rate, interest, rate, interest rate down, that is tax deductible. So um, again, talk to your uh, tax professional about that. Um, property taxes, of course, is tax deductible. Uh, make sure you use put the, put that into your tax filing. Um, any kind of necessary home improvements that you've made. So things like making your home accessible for medical reasons, right? Widening doors, um, making ramps, that kind of thing. That's tax deductible. So keep your receipts there. Report that. Uh, home office expenses. You know, many of us are working from home. Um, home office expenses, right? Consider that, um, do those calculations. Okay, sorry, I wanna make sure I get through all these questions. Um, are there any apps that can help me financially plan and track my progress every year? So we talked about this, um, budgeting apps, financial planning software, they exist. There's free ones out there. How should investors review their investment portfolio at the end of the year? It's a really good question. And I wanna say, I don't wanna to dive too deep into this because everyone's investment portfolio is different. You may have a 401k and then an IRA. You might not have a 401k at all. You might just have IRAs, right? Um, you might not have anything. What I recommend is if you're very interested in it, especially if you got a big bonus and you don't know how to start investing, talk to a financial advisor, a certified financial advisor. Um, they should be able to get you in the right place. And as well, a lot of great information, sec.gov, also investor.gov. Uh, are there any changes in retirement account rules or regulations that individuals should be aware of? Yes, IRA contributions for 2023 increased, right? So 2022, the maximum contributions to your IRA was $6,000. Um, and that's what it's if you have a traditional or a Roth IRA, maybe you have two, both. The maximum you can contribute to any or both is $6,000. That was 2022. 2023, it's $6,500, right? So it went up $500. Um, of course, the numbers change if you're over 50, you get to contribute a little bit more. And if you weren't aware in 2024, those contribution limits increase again. So the maximum in 2024, I believe it's 7,000, $7,000. $7, um, if you're under 50, I, I believe it goes up if you're over 50. So again, be aware of those, make sure you're maximizing your contributions if you can. Um, also, any kind of employer-sponsored plans, um, like your 401k, um, 403b for nonprofits, that kind of thing, um, if you are contributing to those, review any changes that they make, right? Um, maybe their match changed or something like that, right? It's a really good time to review that. Um, and next question... As mortgage interest rates start coming down, I'm thinking about buying a house. How can I prepare for that next year? Uh, good, good question here. I think we talked about things like um, changing your uh, W-2 deductions, right? Uh, uh, we also talked about, um, you know what, maybe you want to, I don't necessarily recommend this, but you could contribute less to an IRA IRA if you're thinking about buying a house so that your income increases. Um, but the other thing is we have a couple of different webinars, actually one last year, uh, actually one this year called um, Pathway to Home Ownership. It's a great webinar. Oh my gosh, so good. Um, we talked about the home buying process. I, one of the best place to start is just to watch the webinar. We talk about uh, you know the home buying process. Cal HFA is there talking about their programs as well. Please check it out. 
Um, one question just came in. Did you just say that we can deduct home improvements? Is that only if I do the long form? Okay. Uh, again, I'm not a tax professional. I'm kind of just going off notes here. I would say review it, or if you have questions, talk to a tax professional and say, hey, what kind of home improvements are tax deductible? Um, based on the notes that I've, and, and the information I've pulled up, uh, any kind of medical, medical home improvements to make your home accessible are, uh, should be, should be tax deductible. Um, again, everyone's tax situation is different. If you're taking the standard deduction, you know, the long form may not apply to you, um, or, 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 uh, so again, definitely want to talk to your tax professional to help you figure that out. Um, okay. Healthcare spending and benefits before the end of the year. Well, we, we just talked a little about this. Um, we talked about some tax deductible healthcare spending, right? Uh, again, if, if you're spending, if this year you had some kind of procedure, right? And it's, you spent so much money, uh, some of it might be tax deductible. There's a threshold. Again, I'm not a tax professional, but I, I would say if you did have some kind of procedure, look into it, right? Do your research. Um, maybe it cost you twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. That might be over the, the threshold and you might be able to start taking deductions on that medical expense, right? Um, if you have a flexible uh, spending count, also known as the FSA, um, beware of the use it or lose it rule, right? It's right at the end of the year. Um, that you might have to spend money in your flexible spending account or you're going to lose it. So consider that. Also for HSAs, which is health savings accounts, um, you know, they're all different, but some contributions could be tax deductible. Um, if you're eligible, you might consider maximizing your contributions to your HSA to take advantage of the tax benefits. Okay, so let me look if there's any more live questions. It looks like there is nothing that's else coming. Um, all right, uh, I, that is it. I know we kind of ended before the one hour mark. I do want to say thank you for joining. Uh, it, uh, it's, and again, we're publishing this webinar on YouTube. You will be getting a follow-up email with uh, the slides attached and of course, um, links to the YouTube recording. And I do want to thank you and wish you a happy holiday um, and a happy new year. Oh, just a quick one last slide. Again, uh, ways to contact us. You could always call us at our number here, 866-275-2677. Um, that's for, you know, you want to submit a complaint. If you have a question about licensees, you want to check a licensee's uh, information, right? Um, there's our website, of course, dfpi.ca.gov. You could always email my team at outreach. Uh, at dfpi.ca.gov. And again, subscribe to our newsletter if you can. Uh, with that, I want to say thank you. Have a happy holiday, a fantastic new year. Please join us for next year. We're going to have some fantastic financial education web webinars. And uh, please take care of you and your, your uh, loved ones. Thank you. Bye.